It's Pentecost Sunday. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> Pentecost Sunday is the day when we remember um, the Spirit of God being poured out on those early disciples as they waited. And Jesus had told them to wait in Jerusalem uh, to receive power from on high, to be clothed with power. And on that uh, first um, day, Pentecost was a great Jewish feast. Um, so many, many people were gathered in Jerusalem on that day. But the disciples were there in a unique place because they were waiting for the Spirit to come. And God poured out his Spirit in a remarkable way. And the world has never been the same since. And every year when we celebrate Pentecost, we remind ourselves of the story, but we also open ourselves to the same Spirit of God and to his work in our lives. And don't we need it? So a very warm welcome to you. If you're here in church, uh, well done. This is a bank holiday sun Sunday. It's also very nice weather. It's also half term. But God is here, and so are we. And if you're following us online, a very, very warm welcome to you. Uh, we have an amazing service up ahead of us. We are going to be witnessing um, baptisms of um, six brothers and sisters who are going to be um, baptized later on in the service. Vera will be preaching, preaching for us. Um, but most of all, the Lord is here in his, uh, by his Spirit, present with us. So I'd like to invite you to stand, and let's just give ourselves to God in prayer before we worship, shall we? Offering ourselves to him and um, inviting him to come. Lord, we thank you for every Sunday that is like a resurrection day, an opportunity for us to once again receive your life. But especially today, as we remember Pentecost, we, uh, Lord, are so excited that you are here and that you are alive and that you pour out your spirit today as you did for the disciples 2,000 years ago. And so, Lord, we um, turn now our hearts and our minds to you. We want to speak out the great things you have done as we worship you. Thank you. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Here we are gathered in the wonderful presence of the Lord, ready to praise Him, to worship Him, to lift our voices in worship. Are you ready to do that? Can we all clap our hands? Let's sing. I so Satan for like lightning. I saw darkness run for cover But the miracle that I just can't get over My name is registered in heaven Oh, I believe in signs and wonders I have resurrection power But the miracle that I just can't get over My name is registered in heaven my praise belongs to you forever This is my testimony from death to life Cause grace rewrote my story I testify by Jesus Christ the righteous I'm justified This is my testimony This is my testimony Come together, sons and daughters Bought with blood and washed in water Sing! Sing the praises of the Spirit, Son and Father Our God will finish what He started Yes, He will! Our God will finish what He started This is my testimony from death to life Cause grace rewrote my story I testify about Jesus Christ the righteous I'm justified This is my testimony This is my testimony Hallelujah Oh 
Lord, we praise your name. Let's all clap our hands. If I'm not dead, you're not done. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe. If I'm not dead, you're not done. Hey, greater things are still to come. Do you believe it? Sing. If I'm not dead, you're not done. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe. If I'm not dead, you're not done. Greater things, greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe. Yes, I do, Lord. This is my testimony from death to life. Cause grace rewrote my story. I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified, this is my testimony, and I'm alive, this is my testimony, from death to life, this grace rewrote my story, I'm testified, by Jesus Christ the righteous, I'm justified, and this is my testimony, this is my testimony, hallelujah. Oh, Lord, I thank you. Amazing, amazing. Wow. Um, can I invite Pink Girl to come on up? Oh, my gosh. I was just... The debate rages. I've had two pinks, two purples today. So it still continues that no one knows what colour my hair is. There you go. <laughs> Sophie, what are, really we doing? Interesting. what are we doing in wildlife today? <laughs> today we're going to look at Pentecost um, and we're going to do some hanging out. Now, because it is half term and a lot of people are going away, we're going to merge a few of the rooms. So if you're in Fireflies or Little Lions, you're just going to be in the middle Mark Thomas room. And if you're in Iguana or Octopus, you're all going to come into the Howard Hall. We're going to learn about Pentecost. We're going to have a cookie decorating competition and we're going to play in the sun. It's going to be fun. Sounds great. Do you want to pray for us? Yeah, I'll pray, pray for you. For All right. Lord, thank you for the, the children. Thank you for uh, your presence with us, whatever age we are. And we ask you bless them now as they go to their activities. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So the children are going to go off to wildlife, and, and we're going to remain here. And I've got a prayer that's um, an invitation, really, for us to uh, focus on the Lord. And it's a special Pentecost prayer. And I'd like to ask you to repeat after each phrase, fill us with your spirit. Okay? So let's just um, calm our hearts. As we wait in silence, Lord, fill us with your spirit. As we listen to your word together, fill us with your spirit. As we worship you in majesty, fill us with your spirit. As we long for your refreshing touch, fill us with your spirit. As we long for your renewing, fill us with your spirit. As we long for your equipping, fill us with your spirit. As we long for your empowering, fill us with your spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Fire of God, wind of God, touch our lives, we pray.
Lord, we want more of you, more of your presence. This is what we long for. Now I'm ready for whatever you want to do. I'm moving forward to follow after you. And now I'm ready for whatever you want to do. One more of you, God. Your presence is an open we want you, Lord, like never before. Your presence is an open door. So come now, Lord, like never before. Hallelujah. In every season, your grace has been enough, and I'm believing the best is yet to come. Oh, yes, Lord, the cross before me, my hope on things above, and in you, Jesus. The best is yet to come. Oh, your presence is an open door. We want you, Lord, like never before. Your presence is an open door. So come. Your presence 
inside is an open door. So come now, Lord, like never before. Hallelujah. I want more of you than I love. More of your presence. Jesus. Oh, the God, we want to acknowledge that you are the God moves the mountain. You are the God who is with us. You are the God of breakthrough. You are the God with me. And your spirit is all we need. And we're expecting
Lord, it's uh, so good to wait in your presence. Lord, you're not a God that rushes from one thing to another. We find it hard to imagine you late for an appointment. You never double book your agenda and your diary. You never forget you're always there. And you love it when we take time to consciously center ourselves on you. So we wait, Lord, on this special day. And as we wait, let's join in the words of a confession that invite us to let go of those things that are not good in our lives. We say together, Heavenly Father, we confess that we have done what is wrong in your sight and have not loved you as well as we could. We're sorry and ask for your forgiveness. Have mercy on us because of your great love. Wash away all the wrong we have done and make us clean on the inside. The Bible says that if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Lord, later on in the service, we're going to be witnessing baptisms which speak to us of your cleansing power. Nothing, Lord, cannot be forgiven when we turn to you. No sin is too great no distance too far. And as we stand and just wait in the Lord's presence, our minds go to the call that God puts on our lives to be agents, ambassadors, representatives of his coming kingdom. The, the last few weeks we've been thinking of that prayer, thy kingdom come. And so we pray. Generous God, we thank you for the power of your Holy Spirit. We ask today that you may strengthen us that we might be witnesses of your kingdom. We thank you, Lord, for the wisdom that your spirit gives. And you know all the decisions we have to make and sometimes our situations are so complex. We ask you to make us wise to understand your will. Thank you, Lord, for the healing that your Holy Spirit brings. And it's true, Lord, that so often we limp along with areas in our lives that so need your touch. And then we look out and we see other people, Lord, and we long to help. 
we ask you to fill us with your Holy Spirit of healing, that we might be agents of reconciliation and wholeness wherever there is division or sickness or sorrow. Thank you for the breath of your Holy Spirit, Lord, that that spoke creation into life and then on the day of Pentecost breathed new life into the disciples. We ask you to breathe on us afresh now. Here's a wonderful special prayer for Pentecost. Holy Spirit, sent by the Father, ignite in us your holy fire. Strengthen your children with the gift of faith. Revive your church with the breath of love and renew the face of our earth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. And so we say, Lord, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let's sit, shall we? And um, maybe as you sit, just turn to somebody and smile at them and welcome them if you don't know them. But we're just sitting. We're not engaging in long conversation, please. Worship team. Okay, let's turn to the front if you don't mind, please. Let's turn to the front. Um, We'll have a wonderful opportunity at the end of the service to greet one another. And um, let's uh, sit down, shall we? That's fantastic. Thank you. Um, you received as you came in to church a service sheet. The service sheet has all the notices you need and lots of colourful images as well to go with it. Can I encourage you to take that with you and to read it? Um, Just um, a couple of things. Um, First of all, um, Pentecost is the, the... is, is in some ways the birthday of the church. It's the, the, the moment that the, the church really sort of came into its own. And, but it's also an anniversary today that we're celebrating this afternoon, a five-year anniversary of French Connect. Those of you who've been with our church for a, a, a length of time will know that five years ago we launched an initiative to reach out to French speakers in this part of London and to uh, begin to support God's mission uh, in France uh, through partnerships and and connecting. And over the last five years, we've seen some amazing things happen. God has been so good to us and faithful to us. And this afternoon, we want to invite the whole church, everybody who can come, whether or not you speak French, to join us at three o'clock this afternoon in church. We have a crepe. Uh, party where we're going to be celebrating with French crepe and then there'll be music from our band and uh, refreshments and games an opportunity for us to perhaps meet people we don't know and then at five o'clock we have a very special bilingual service in French and English that will um, be a sort of celebration service with testimonies uh, where we can uh, really celebrate what God has done through our French Connect ministry. So please do um, come if you can this afternoon. Everybody is welcome at three o'clock and uh, we look forward to a particularly uh, exciting time there of rejoicing as we remember the good things that, that God has uh, done. Um, 
reminder, uh, particularly to those online, that uh, it's still possible to give even if you're not physically here. But if you are physically here, you can give to our church as well. Um, there are baskets as you go out, and there's also a card reader. Uh, last week, the card reader was unhappy and didn't seem to be working properly. But I have it on good authority that the card reader is uh, full of God's spirit today and is ready to go. So why don't you try the card reader uh, a little bit as you, uh, as you go towards um, the end of the service. That would be fantastic. And then after the service, please join in refreshments and uh, do welcome as well uh, the candidates who uh, will have been baptized um, as a sign of um, uh, that fellowship that we uh, want to share together. We are going to um, turn now to our reading and we're continuing while well, we're reflecting on that great story of uh, Pentecost and I'd like to ask Richard to come up and also Parisa and we're going to have a reading from Acts chapter 2. The first reading is from, uh, readings from Acts chapter 2, uh, begin to read the first verse. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. چون روز پنتیکاست فرا رسید همه یکده در یک جا جمع بودند که ناگاه صدای همچون صدای وزش تند بادی از آسمان آمد و خانه ای را که در آن نشسته بودند به تمامی پر کرد. آنگاه زبانه های دیدن همچون زبانه های آتش که تقسیم شد و بر هر یک از ایشان قرار گرفت سپس همه از روح القدس پر گشتند و آن گونه که روح به دیشان قدرت تکلم می بخشید به زبان های دیگر سخن گفتن آغاز کردند Now they were staying in Jerusalem God fearing Jews from every nation under heaven When they heard this sound a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia, sorry, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, as we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, oh, they've had too much wine. آنگاه پتروس با آن یازده تن برخاست و صدای خود را بلند کرده خطاب به دیشان گفت ای یهودیان و ای ساکنان اورشلیم این را دریابید و به آنچه میگویم به دقت گوش فرا دهید این مردان برخلاف آنچه شما میپندارید مست نیستند زیرا هنوز ساعت سوم از روز است بلکه این همان است که یوئیل نبی درباره اش چنین پیشگویی کرده بود خدا می‌فرماید در روزهای آخر از روح خود بر تمامی بشر فرو خواهد ریخت. آنگاه هر که نام خداوند را بخواند نجات خواهد یافت. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visit visions. Your old men will dream dreams. 
Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. And anyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. morning. I don't know which category you would identify with, but I've been told that there are only two kinds of people. Those who like surprise parties and those who don't. <laughs> so maybe for some of us, surprises in general are disturbing, unsettling while others may love them and consider them as a blessing. But one thing is certain. For God's people, life is not flat and linear, but rather eventful and full of unexpected episodes. And indeed, if God is to interact, if he is to play a part in the unfolding of our experiences and write our story with us, then I guess it's not totally crazy to think that we should be ready for events to happen in our lives. And I just want to be clear and tell you what event is for me. It is just what a modern dictionary would define it to be. That is, what happens and is important to people. That's what an event is. So yes, probably if we consider ourselves as members of God's people, and I hope we all do, we should then probably be ready for events and even more for unexpected events. And today we are looking at a particular moment in time. We are looking at the first Pentecost. Pentecost in Greek, Pentecoste, means 50th. So we are looking at what happened 50 days after Easter. And even if looking at these things from a distance... We do not to stop with have a total understanding of what happened then. It still somehow feels right to label that as an event. Something that happened and was important to the people. But what exactly happened at Pentecost? First, what we could say is that things seem to have started with a rather ordinary situation. A group of people, 12 of them, gathered in a house in Jerusalem. Nothing very extraordinary with that at first sight. But then what were those 12 people doing? Well, they were waiting. They were simply waiting they didn't necessarily know exactly, clearly what they were waiting for, but together they were waiting. They were waiting because of a word, an instruction that had been given to them. And this changes everything. In fact, because of the word that was spoken, a word they heard and acted upon, the situation they were in that first seemed quite ordinary had now to be requalified. Because of what led them there, a word, the place they were in was now to be seen as a place of expectation, a place of hope. The house they were in was now a place of promises to be fulfilled. The people gathered there without really knowing what would happen or how or when, 
those promises would be fulfilled. But they were there, and they were all there by faith. And indeed, a few days earlier, before they were separated from him, Jesus, their master, the one they had seen, they have been following for three years, the one they learned to trust, the one who walked with them, patiently taught them and revealed them many things, surprising things, notably things about a place he called the kingdom. So Jesus, their master, told them, go. Go to Jerusalem and wait. Wait for something, a gift. It is a gift that has long been promised to you. In fact, it is a gift that has first been promised by my father. And it is something I have myself also told you about. So he gave, he gave them some instructions and he also told them, you will receive power. A rather mysterious statement. But in any case, the disciples are now in Jerusalem. And as they wait, some rather unusual things begin to happen. Luke described the scene in a very vivid manner. It tells about a puzzling scene with what I would call sound and light effects. The sound of a violent wind which filled the whole house and the light of what looked like tongues of fire that separated and rested on each person. The wind, the tongues were signs of a powerful outpouring of the spirit. God was breaking in. God was moving and making himself present in this house. In the lives of the people present and through them who were meant to be sent away, God was making himself available to a multitude. So yes, I think it is right to say that Pentecost was an event. Something that happens and is important to people. But what happened at Pentecost wasn't just important because it was unusual. Clearly something unprecedented was happening and unfolding before everybody's eyes and nobody had ever seen anything like that. And in fact, the witnesses couldn't understand. They could not make sense of what was happening. And they were just wondering, what is this? So yes, at Pentecost, there was undoubtedly an element of unusualness. Things were unprecedented. But the event went beyond that. And the situation was not either only important because of an obvious power dimension. Jesus said, you will receive power. And power was not absent from the scene. We saw and felt it with the wind, the fire. But in fact, the importance of the event went beyond this type of manifestation of power. For in truth, the disciples had already seen some manifestation of power before. During the time they spent with Jesus, they saw him preach, preach the kingdom in word and deed, and he did it with authority and power. Signs and wonders followed him, and they saw all kinds of miracles, transformation of elements, multiplication, healings, casting out of demons. But here, the demonstration of power seemed different. In Jerusalem, the 12 disciples who had been in contact with the tongue of fire had apparently been themselves strangely 
and powered. They were now surprisingly able to speak different languages, many different languages. In fact, Luke mentions that citizens from every nation under heaven were present at the, the scene and that all could hear the disciples speak in their own tongue. So, what was going on? As some witness asked, what does this mean? I think that to answer the witness's question, to be able to grasp the meaning of what was happening at Pentecost in Jerusalem, we need to look at the events and see them, not just with the eyes, but as we might say with the Greek verb, orao, to see them with the eyes of the spirit. To orao would then be an ability to discern and read the signs of the time. And with them, try to understand the moves of God. Try to understand what God is doing or what he might be saying to individuals, to communities, to the world. And here, seeing with the eyes of the Spirit would imply take a step back, broadening the perspective and taking into account the words spoken by Jesus a few days prior to Pentecost. And again, part of what Jesus said was, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Pentecost was therefore a time of fulfillment of the prophecies and a time of transition. A sort of transition period between the ministry of Jesus and that of the Spirit who came to prolong it. God was moving and the appearance of the tongues of fire somehow opened up a new era, the era of the full presence and ministry of the Holy Spirit in the world. This era was announced long ago. Jesus talked about it and said, you will receive power. But his prophecy was echoing another one given by the prophet Joel hundred years before him. Joel proclaimed, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. And this means I am willing to bless. I am willing to share this precious thing that is my spirit with everyone, every nation, every person. This sharing, this giving, will bring you new abilities. It will bring transformation. Transformation in your perception, in your communication, and in your relationship with me. This sharing of my spirit will allow a greater intimacy with me, with my thoughts, with my action. So yes, Pentecost was an event in which a power dimension was present and even on the foreground. But in fact, the reason why what was happening was important is because it was transformational. The experience of Pentecost was transformational for the disciples, for the witnesses, and gradually for the whole world. And that's the effects the Pentecost power had. The era of the Spirit has been open 
at the first Pentecost. And the truth is that it is still open. It is still open for us today. And I wonder, I wonder if today we would be ready to journey and go in this place of waiting. This place the first disciples found them, themselves in and stayed. I wonder if today we would be willing to go in this place of receiving, to receive from the Father, from the Son, and from the Holy Spirit, so that we would be equipped, shaped, or reshaped for our lives, for our mission, for our specific calling, equipped and sent to broaden the kingdom and speak of God's identity and of his powerful and transforming presence. I wonder if we would be willing to do that now. Give time and space to the Spirit. Open our hearts and let him know that he is welcome. That he has authority to use his power to touch us, transform us, and through us, impact and transform part of the world. One important thing to consider is that although the first Pentecost happened some times ago, it was only the starting point of a movement that we must, or at least we can, constantly update. I believe that Jesus is constantly inviting us to go to what we could call the upper room, a place between heaven and earth where we could be waiting to receive from him things that he would like to give us personally. I wonder if we could do that now. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your plan. Thank you for your wisdom, for your authority. We submit to you. Thank you for your power and for your grace. Thank you for the first Pentecost, for your desire to make yourself available, your desire to give to bless us with your presence. Lord, here we are. Your people are here, thirsty, ready to receive from you life anew. Holy Spirit, come. Would you break into this place, break into our lives, and take over any place that is not strongly sealed with your identity and power? Lord, we are here. Holy Spirit, come. Bless us. Touch us. Transform us and send us wherever you seem fit. Holy Spirit, come. Lord, your kingdom come. Your will be done in the name of Jesus. Amen.
just didn't see how the sweetest of loves when my heart becomes free chimneys of love in your presence Lord Holy Spirit Holy Spirit you are welcome here come fill this place and fill the Stand with us. The Lord is working by his spirit, and as we continue in this service, let's continue just to receive. Um, we had a, a picture of um, that uh, we are surrounded by heavenly beings. There's so much more that we to life that, than what we can see, isn't that right? And, and as the spirit comes by his, uh, in his love and his power... Um, we're, we're opened up to God's presence in new ways. So um, let's remind ourselves that we are surrounded here. We're in heaven, surrounded by uh, those who are cheering us on. And the Spirit is at work. Can I invite you to sit down? Um, we're going to 
move to our baptisms and um, we're delighted today that six, we have six people who are being baptized um, all of whom have um, come to faith from a Muslim background from Iran uh, from an Iranian background and so we're going to be listening to uh, their testimonies now on um, our screens for um, you'll understand that for sort of security reasons we've blurred their faces so just be um, this is so that what goes out um, they can't be identified, obviously. Um, just uh, want to reassure you that they have real faces. And you'll see those at the end. They, they're real faces and they're real people, even if on the video they look a little bit like machine faces, you know, because they've been blurred. These are real people who are speaking about real encounters with a real living God. Let's listen. Faith is the gift of God to his people. In baptism, the Lord is adding to our number those whom he is calling. People of God, will you welcome these candidates and uphold them in their new life in Christ? And the answer we say together is, with the help of God, we will. Let's say that together. With the help of God, we will. In baptism, God calls us out of darkness into his marvelous light. To follow Christ means dying to sin and rising to new life with him. Therefore, I ask the six of you these questions. Do you turn to Christ? Do you repent of your sins? Do you renounce evil? You must now declare before God and his church the Christian faith into which you are to be baptized and in which you live and grow. So I ask you these questions. Do you believe and trust in God the Father who made the world? Do you believe and trust in his son, Jesus Christ, who redeemed all people? Do you believe and trust in his Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God? Friends, this is the faith of the church. Together, let's say, this is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. As the uh, candidates make their way up to uh, be baptized, we're going to be praying over the water. And um, what will happen is we'll, after we've said this prayer, before each one goes down, we'll call out their name. And uh, we'll read the verse that they have uh, chosen. And uh, Jolly is going to come and join me. I'll read it in English. And Jolly will uh, read that in Farsi for us. But let us pray first. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water to sustain, refresh, and cleanse all life. Over water, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through water, you led the children of Israel from slavery in Egypt to freedom in the promised land. In water, your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us from the death of sin to newness of life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are born of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we baptize into his fellowship those who come to him in faith. Now sanctify this water, that by the power of your Holy Spirit, they may be cleansed from sin and know that new birth that you alone can bring. Renew in your image. Renewed in your image, may they walk in the light of faith and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Lord. 
to whom with you and the Holy Spirit all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Our first uh, candidate for baptism is Sholi, and uh, the passage is John 14, verses 13 and 14. Whatever you ask in my name, I will do, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. شما می توانید به نام من هر چیزی درخواست کنید و اما آن را برایتان انجام خواهم داد چون من که پسر خدا هستم هر چه برای شما انجام دهم باعث بزرگی و جلال پدر خواهد شد Amen. This is amazing. That's amazing. That's amazing. Surely I sign you with the sign of the cross. Do not be ashamed to confess the faith of Christ crucified. Fight valiantly as a disciple of Christ against sin, the world and the devil, and remain faithful to Christ to the end of your life. Well done. Fantastic. And she has chosen John uh, chapter 4, beginning of verse 14. Whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Dele shoma mustarab nabashab, nabashad. Be khuda iman dashte bashid. Be man niz iman dashte bashid. Dar khane pedal. من منزل بسیاری است و گرنه به شما میگویم میوم تا مکانی برای شما آماده کنم Mimi I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit <laughs> I sign you with the sign of the cross, the sign of Jesus in your life. Do not be ashamed to confess the faith of Christ crucified. Fight valiantly as a disciple of Christ against sin, the world and the devil and remain faithful to Jesus Christ to the end of your life. Well done. Next we have Amir Ali, and the passage he has chosen is Matthew 7, verse 12. In everything, do to others what you would have them do to you, for this sums up the law and the prophets. پس با مردم همان گونه رفتار کنید که می خواهید با شما رفتار کنند. این از خلاصه تورات و نوشته های انبیاء. Amir Ali, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yes. 
sign of the cross, the sign of Jesus Christ, your Lord and Saviour. Do not be ashamed to confess the faith of Christ crucified. Fight valiantly as a disciple of Christ against sin, the world and the devil, and remain faithful to Christ to the end of your life. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Next we have Kimia, and uh, the passage she has chosen is Hebrews chapter 13, verses 5 and 6. God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. So we say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? God has said, I will not be afraid. و هرگز ترک نخواهم کرد پس با اطمینان میگوییم خداوند یاور من است پس نخواهم ترسید انسان به من چه تواند کرد کیمیا i baptize you in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit Kimia, I sign you with the sign of the cross, the sign of Christ. Do not be ashamed to confess the faith of Christ crucified. Fight valiantly as a disciple of Christ against sin, the world and the devil, and remain faithful to Christ to the end of your life. Yes. Well done. <laughs> Our next uh, candidate for baptism is Saper, and uh, the passage she has chosen is 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. The Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. خداوند روح است و هر کجا رو خداوند باشد آنجا آزادی است. Saper, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Lord, thank you for your amazing, amazing love. I pray you fill today now with your spirit and uh, everything you need to grow in you and to become strong in you day after day. I sign you with the sign of the cross, the sign of Jesus Christ in your life. Do not be ashamed to confess the faith of Christ crucified. Fight valiantly as a disciple of Christ against sin, the world, and the devil, 
and remain faithful to Christ to the end of your life. And our final candidate is Shakufi, and uh, she's chosen John 14, verses 1 through 3. Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If that were not, if that were not so, would I have told you I am going there to prepare a place for you? دل شما مسترب نباشد به خدا ایمان داشته باشید به من نیز ایمان داشته باشید در خانه پدر من منزل بسیار است وگرنه به شما می گفتم می روم تا مکانی برای شما آماده کنم و آنگاه که رفتم و مکانی برای شما آماده کردم باز می آیم و شما یا نزد خود می برم تا آنجا که من هستم شما نیز باشید Shukufe, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I sign you with the sign of the cross, the sign of Jesus Christ in your life. Do not be ashamed to confess the faith of Christ crucified. Fight valiantly as a disciple of Christ against sin, the world, and the devil and remain faithful to Christ to the end of your life. Well done. Thank you. Stand. Well, that was a good welcome. We have some official words we're supposed to say to welcome them, and we're going to do those now, but um, that, was, that was a proper St. Barnabas welcome. Let's say these words. There, uh, I'll say, uh, begin, and uh, there, there should be some responses that come on the screen. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism by one spirit. We are all baptized into one body. We welcome you in the fellowship of faith. We are children of the same Heavenly Father. We welcome you. Amen. Well, while they go and get changed and dried off, um, we're going to have our final song. But before we do that, uh, let me just give the blessing today. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance on you and grant you his peace. And the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and those you love wherever they may be this day and always. Amen. Well, it's 
say I searched the world But it couldn't fill me A man's empty praise And treasures to pay Are never enough And you came along And you put me back together And every desire is now satisfied here in your love. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you. To show you my weakness My failures and flaws But you've seen them all And you still call me friend You're the God of the mountain You're the God of the valley And there's not a place your mercy and grace won't find me again. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Oh, yeah. Lord, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing, nothing is better than you. Oh, you turn mourning to dancing. You give beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory You're the only one who can You turn mourning to dancing You give beauty for ashes You turn shame into glory You're the only one who can You turn praise into God Turn bones into armies. Hey. You turn seas into highways. You're the only one who. You turn grace. You turn grace into garden. You turn bones into armies. You turn seas into highways. You're the Than you, there's nothing better than he, Lord. There's nothing, and nothing is better than you. Come on, let's see one more time. Lord, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing, oh, yes, God. Lord, there's nothing, and nothing is better than you. There's nothing, Lord, Lord, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord, there's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Come on, come on. That's it. Our service is finished. Please do stay for refreshments. Just one thing. Um, the, the, 
the Lord is at work here today, and so if you would like to ask for prayer, or if you want to, you've never taken a step of coming to give yourself or your heart to Jesus, and you'd like to know more about that, please do ask. Uh, come to the front, we'd be delighted to talk to you or offer you prayer. Uh, it's a good moment to take. But have a great day. Don't forget to come back this afternoon at 3 o'clock and then 5 o'clock for French Connect if you can. And enjoy the refreshments. Praise God. Thank you.